Hey, I'm Paul Begay, AST Systems Designer. We're back here again with Craig Lawson from Gulf Coast Research Lab. And um, Craig is going to talk to us about what we have going on in here. Now, I got to say, this is probably the most thrilling thing for me because the fish that are in these tanks, this is my all time favorite fish. This is the spotted sea trout, call them speckled trout. Uh, I'm on the speckled trout most wanted list because man oh man I catch these things they're the most delicious fish uh, so I'm, I'm I don't look too closely my mouth's gonna be watering during the video uh, but Craig why don't you take it away tell us what's going on with these systems and then we're gonna go back and take a look at uh, tank number two tank number two okay so what's going on with these systems this is our sea trout brood stock holding and spawning facility. Uh, as you can see, we've got six tanks with populations from various localities. Uh, I believe the two that we feature most prominently are Davis Bayou and Bay St. Louis. Davis Bayou being very local, Bay St. Louis being about 45 minutes away from this location. Uh, our speckled trout are brought in, held for 30 days at our quarantine facility where they go through a copper treatment and a disinfection process. Then when they've been sized and sexed, they are moved to locations here for breeding with some of our older populations. So what's the end goal with breeding of the speckled trout? The end goal with breeding is uh, experimentation and stock enhancement, stock enhancement being the main goal. This program works very closely with the Mississippi Department of Marine Resources, uh -huh. and we provide them with spawns for their grow out facility, uh -huh. and we provide them with uh, fingerlings and fry that we actually do release with them. Okay, and so uh, stock enhancement, if you're not familiar with that, uh, talk a little bit about that program and Gulf Coast Research Lab's uh, role. Just expand on what you just said a little bit. Okay, well, our stock enhancement primarily focuses on bringing in wild caught fish and producing fish from those wild caught populations right. to reintroduce to wild areas for the enjoyment of recreational anglers. Recreational anglers, all right, like me. Okay, so um, we're gonna go take a look at tank number two. Yep. We're gonna go over all the ins and outs of that tank, and um, we're gonna go take a look at that right now. Now, did you uh, plumb this system up? I did not. These systems were plumbed in a long time before I got here but the addition of the bead filter uh, on this system occurred while I was here. Okay, so here we are at tank number two. Look at that. They look like eaters to me. They definitely are. Um, these fish came out of our quarantine most recently. They were collected last year at Davis Bayou, and uh, they are between 10 and 14 inches, most of them. Uh, these are all new fish. You'll see in some of the other tanks that we actually mix them with older fish that have been in captivity for a longer period of time. Are they uh, more skittish than, say, the triple tail? Compared to the triple tail, they are extremely skittish. Okay. But um, they take pretty well to tank culture. Some of the older fish you'll see are a lot more comfortable, a lot more relaxed in their environment. Just behind us, we've got the AST bubble bead filter. Is this taking care of your biological filtration in addition to solids capture? This is primarily our method of solid capture within this system. Our biological filtration being uh, far more devoted in our drum filter that's further down the line. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, just talk to me a little bit about the maintenance on the bead filter. The primary backwash protocol that's been established across campus mandates that backwashing occurs approximately once a week. Uh, these filters can probably handle being backwashed a little bit less. Yeah. But we want to maintain that perfect clarity of water. We don't want to forget the animal in this whole process because there's a lot of things going on here and it's really to provide pristine water quality so that we can have these animals spawn. So that's a, that's a really important thing to keep in mind. But Craig, this all looks great. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to talk about with this si system in particular? Because I'm getting hungry, it's almost lunchtime, and I think I'm gonna get a fish fillet sandwich. Uh, I'm just, I, I'm, I, I wanna look at this fish a little bit longer. Absolutely. Um, with respect to this system, it definitely does have a little bit more of a condensed footprint, I'd say. Mm -hmm. um, 
depending on the size of your facility, depending on what you're looking at doing in terms of like growing and or spawning fish, you can actually spread all of this out to provide a much more simplified viewing plan for it. Sure, so, sure, sure. It's not always about fitting the most peripherals you can in the smallest amount of space. Uh, it is if you're obviously doing an operation of this size, this intensity. Right. But, um, your plumbing and your filtration should all evolve towards a state of simplicity that does not include all of the junctions and peripherals. Yeah, absolutely. Simplify what you have. Uh, it's, it's very important. Um, and these, these types of systems evolve over time. The bead filter wasn't here. Uh, and then when he got here, incorporating the bead filter was something that, uh, that he was part of. Take a hard look at your plumbing. Don't make it too, too complex. Again, we're thinking about the animals here. I always tell folks, I'm, I'm worried about the fish. I'm really concerned most with the fish, um, not so much with uh, the, the extraneous details, but that is something. Can we take one more look at those fish before we go? I, I just, I want y'all, I want y'all to see these. It's speckled trout. Beautiful, delicious. Uh, Craig, I want to thank you again, buddy. This is, this has absolutely been a really, really good experience for us. Um, I'm, I'm sure that, that the folks that are viewing this video are also just as excited. Um, Gulf Coast Research Lab, University of Southern Mississippi. Um, Y'all have a great website. And, and again, um, read up on some of the cool things that they have going on there. And, uh, and really, you know, Craig, keep up the good work, man. I'm, I'm, I'm really, really happy about everything that's going on. And, and we're happy to be a part of it and a small part that we are. Yeah, just glad we could show people. Really Absolutely. We do. Absolutely. All right. Thanks again. And tune in for more videos to come from Gulf Coast Research Lab.